Joining me now is the Putin fan, YouTuber Jackson Hinkle, and the Russian-British host of the Trigonometry podcast, Konstantin Kissin. OK, well, welcome to both of you. Jackson, I don't get it. Uh, Vladimir Putin invaded illegally a democratic sovereign country, has wreaked total mayhem, he's killed innocent women, children, he's bombed maternity hospitals. Uh, he's been on a barbaric rampage. Why would you choose this moment to revere him? I would choose this moment because most of what is said about Vladimir Putin in the mainstream press by talking heads like yourself is just factually not true, just like everything that people like you said about COVID. Uh, the fact of the matter is this war that everyone talks about that so, uh, so-called so started on February 24, 2022, actually began in 2014 after the U.S. led a violent coup on the Ukrainian government that was democratically elected. When people, specifically ethnic Russians in the Donbass, decided that they didn't want a U.S.-installed puppet government filled with Nazis, they vocalized their opinions. And for that, they were met with violence and aggression by the Ukrainian government, who slaughtered them for eight years. 15,000 people died in this fighting while Putin tried to achieve peace through the Minsk Accords and the Minsk II Accords, all of which ended up being rejected by the Ukrainian government at the behest of Germany and the United States. The Ukrainian government continued to push forward despite the fact that Putin wanted peace, and they said that they wanted to join NATO. They said they wanted to have nukes right on Russia's border, and because of that, Putin stepped in and said, hey, look, we're going to stop the bloodshed. We're going to stop the NATO escalation. We're going to stop the risk of potentially this unfolding into a full-fledged nuclear war, and we're going to do what needs to be done. We're going to liberate the ethnic Russians in Ukraine. We're going to denatify Ukraine, okay. and we're going to denazify Ukraine. All right, I've given you a good chance to answer there. I've got to say, a lot of that I thought was a crock of crap. But let me go to Konstantin Kissin. Konstantin, I find this attitude completely mind-blowing. There used to be a time when Americans in particular, particularly conservative Americans, when faced with a choice between a democratic sovereign country and a murderous Russian dictator invading them, they wouldn't even hesitate to support the Ukrainians in this battle. What has happened that's turned people like this guy into Putin lovers who just think he's a man of peace? Well, he did say that uh, Putin stepped in to end the bloodshed, which I thought is interesting given what's been going on in Ukraine for the last year and a half. Uh, but actually, there's a history. I mean, first of all, isolationism is a policy that has had some support in America historically. In fact, 1939, 1940, there were people marching up and down Times Square saying, Hitler hasn't done anything to us, let's have peace with Hitler. So Jackson is following in their footsteps there. But you were right in your introduction, this is a very online phenomenon. I was just in mm. several conservative states in America, West Virginia, uh, Utah. You go around, there's Ukraine flags on, on most of the houses there. So this is quite a fringe position. Uh, but I think uh, Jackson actually alluded to some of the reasons. There is a growing movement of people who feel that they've been lied to by the mainstream media, quite rightly, by the way, particularly over things like COVID. Yeah, yeah. And they've developed a sort of teenage oppositional defiance disorder where they now think that the truth is whatever is the opposite of what the mainstream is saying. And we've just heard a very good representation of that. I don't know, I mean, I don't know where this mindset takes them. I always say to, to conservatives uh, who come up with this kind of stuff, well, what did you feel about the invasion of Kuwait by Saddam Hussein, the, the first one? Because they weren't part of NATO, Kuwait, and yet the Americans, along with the British, raced to throw Saddam Hussein out of there. And I get told, well, he didn't have nuclear weapons. Well, we thought he did actually have weapons of mass destruction um, that whole period, but it didn't stop us doing what was morally the right thing to do. And it's that weird moral maze that they've all got themselves into, where they're now defending the very person that historically conservatives would have railed against. Uh, and a KGB colonel, of course, you remember that too. And it's interesting because one of the arguments people like Jackson make, it's a pity we've lost him because I'd love to have more of a debate. Uh, but uh, one of the things they seem to think is that this guy is a representation of the Christian tradition, which is interesting because uh, this is a man who's had several children out of wedlock with mm. his mistress. And by the way, what's interesting is that people like Jackson often talk about how under Vladimir Putin, Russia has become this great country. And by the way, Putin has stabilized Russia. There's no argument about that. But uh, most of the elites in Russia have their children and their wives in Europe. Mm. Th th this is interesting, isn't it? Because they claim that Russia is this great place under Vladimir Putin, yet all of those people place their families outside, which mm. is, uh, tells you a lot about what they actually think about the country. So uh, we've got Jackson back, I think. Jackson, uh, genuinely, the connection went down, so there's no conspiracy. We weren't trying to silence you. 
Look, I just find it odd. I mean, for argument's sake, when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, did you feel that he was a peace-loving guy that we should be instinctively supporting? Or did you agree with American conservatives then that what should actually happen is Desert Storm and General Schwarzkopf should be leading the American charge to repel him? And if you felt the latter, why would you feel differently about someone like Putin doing this in Ukraine? Well, I don't know if you know, Pierce, I'm only 23 years old, so I didn't have fully fledged opinions on that at the time. But what I think is very interesting is for all the Western officials that are so outraged over what Putin is doing in Ukraine, why were they not outraged over what NATO did to Yugoslavia or what NATO did to Libya or what the United States did in Iraq and Afghanistan or Syria? The United States drone operation program in Africa had a 95 percent civilian death rate. For everyone to be so up in arms over Putin liberating these ethnic Russians in Ukraine from Nazis, it is just, yeah, I, that, I have no... Listen, no Jackson, Jackson, the trouble is, some of the stuff you said in your initial response is historically defensible. You can argue from 2014 there's been this issue there. I get that. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to say. But when you say that Putin's only game here is to go and liberate the Ukrainians from Nazis, you just sound completely bonkers. Bonkers. Not to say there aren't some far-right people with Nazi tendencies in Ukraine. There are, as there are in many countries. But the idea this is a Nazi-run country when the president is Jewish, never mind anything else, is laughably ridiculous. Well, just because he's Jewish doesn't mean he's not sicking his Azov Nazi thugs on ethnic Russians in the Donbass. You think we a Jewish president <laughs> is going to be actively promoting Nazism? <laughs> That's Correct. Your position. The, the, what, the ones with swastika tattoos and Hitler tattoos okay. in Mariupol, for example. You know, Jackson, but what I'll say, Pierce, Pierce, Pierce one question, one yeah. question. What I'll say is, if you're so outraged over the, you know, the, the atrocities, allegedly, of Putin in Ukraine and all these Ukrainians that have been killed, and you tweet about it nonstop, why did you not tweet once about the atrocities that were perpetrated by the Ukrainian government from 2014 to 2022 against those ethnic Russians in the Donbass? Well... Yeah, Kostasek. Well, I, my family are actually uh, largely ethnic Russians in Ukraine. Uh, the idea that the, the, there's a significant body of people in Ukraine who, by virtue of being ethnic Russians, support what Vladimir Putin do, is doing mm -hmm. is complete uh, hogwash, frankly. Um, and the, the lots of the other points that have been made. I mean, you're right. Uh, there are some far-right elements in Ukraine, as there are in America. The Azov Battalion that Jackson's referring to was formed after Russia invaded in 2014, in the same way that if Mexico invaded the United States, there'd probably be some far-right people going out and fighting there. So uh, he's got the, the whole thing backwards, uh, which is not surprising. You know what? We, we could probably explore this in more detail. I mean, Will Jackson, I've got no desire to censor you, to stop you having your views. You're entitled to them, or we'll challenge them. Uh, we've run out of time tonight, but I think we should do this again another time. Uh, you can have a platform here. We can talk about these things because a lot of people seem to agree with you, which I find baffling, but that's the reality. So thank you for joining Piers Morgan on Census tonight. Constantine, always good to see you.